so let's start just answering my question. What is abortion? What is it really? We've got two different definitions depending on your point of view, depending on your worldview. Pro-abortion definitions and our, my definition, pro-life, you can imagine what pro-abortion activists would say and think if they listened to or watched this lecture. Okay. Here's a pro-abortion definition. Here would be what you would find in general. The accepted idea of an abortion is that it is the expulsion of a fetus aside from birth. It's also often defined as the termination of a pregnancy. The termination of a pregnancy, that sounds pretty innocuous. Um, the expulsion of the fetus aside from birth. And this allows to abortionists to give us two categories of abortions. We have a spontaneous abortion and we have an induced abortion. Spontaneous abortion is commonly called a miscarriage. So if we define induced abortion to include miscarriage, it kind of softens the blow of what's really going on. Here's what, in reality, abortion literally is. The willful, often violent destruction of a human life before birth. It's willful and violent and it destroys human life. Your pro-choice, pro-abortion advocates are going to say the fetus isn't viable. They're going to say it's my body, it's my right. That's not what's going on. You're not just ending a pregnancy. You're not just removing tissues and membranes. It is the willful, violent <coughs> destruction of a human life. Um, it's the premeditated murder of a child. All right. When, in most states in the United States, when a murder is committed, there are different levels that a person can be charged with, right? If, if you cause the death of another person, there are different levels. There's justifiable homicide. There's vehicular homicide. Okay. There's um, wrongful death. Then there's murder in different degrees. What is the worst kind of murder? Well, the very worst kind of murder would be multiple, serial murder, right? And that's, that's a capital offense. Or on an individual basis, the worst level of murder is first degree. What makes murder first degree? What do they have to, they have to prove premeditation. And so you're, not, you're going to get a lesser penalty if you cause the death of another person if, you, if they can't prove you premeditated it. If it happened accidentally, obviously you're going to get a different charge. Um, if it happened in self-defense or things like that, there's all kinds of levels. But the worst thing that you can do with murder legally is premeditation. What is abortion? Premeditated murder. It is. It should be a capital offense. Right, so there's our two definitions. Let's, before we start attacking abortion in detail, where are we going to begin? We're going to begin with the Bible. Okay, you've got to base your beliefs on the Bible. You have to start with what does the Bible say about abortion? All right, so we're going to go through some Bible principles here. Uh, I need to do it quickly, but here is the first one. God sees no difference between the born and the unborn child. Fetus is certainly not a term that is in the Bible or indicated anywhere near that there's any difference in personality before birth. There's no indication. In fact, the opposite is indicated. Um, the verses that I have here are Jeremiah 115. Jeremiah 115 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Of course, that's God's providence in the life of Jeremiah's mother, right? And in the life of Jeremiah himself. 
um, let's see, we've got Isaiah 44, 24 that I don't have. That one's interesting. Isaiah 44, 24. Um, and then Isaiah 49, 1. Also Isaiah 49, 5. Some additional scripture that I don't have there. The, la the second scripture you see is Exodus 21. That deals with Levitical law. Or, um, of course, that's in Exodus, so it's given uh, to Moses. And this is the idea of a man strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, yet no mischief follow. He shall surely be punished according as a woman's husband will lay upon him and pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. What is mischief? The death of either the mother or the baby. Now, it says her fruit depart from her. That does not mean that the baby dies. That means she has an early birth. Okay, she goes into labor early and has the child early. That's what that means. That doesn't mean, oh, it's okay if her fruit departs from her. That's not talking about the death of the child. That's talking about an early birth. Okay, and even some Christians are going to say, well, the Bible doesn't put death as a penalty for losing a baby. Well, it does, because the mischief that follows is the death of the baby. Okay, so this verse is, is already being um, misconstrued. This one, I think, is important. The shedding of innocent blood is especially odious to God. What is it? It's an abomination. Okay, it's especially odious to God. It's put in the, on the list of abominations. Of course, you probably recognize Proverbs 16, or 6, 16, Proverbs 6, 16, and 17. These six, six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and of course, the next one is what I'm referring to. Hands that shed, what kind of blood? Innocent blood. How much more innocent could it be than the blood of an unborn child. Okay, so um, then also Deuteronomy 27, 25 is an interesting verse. Um, and this one is even more applicable to abortion. Maybe I should have put it first. All right, so I want you to know Deuteronomy 27, 25. This is a list of curses and so forth given by God in Deuteronomy. Um, and if you look at Deuteronomy 27, some of the other sins in this chapter are terrible, terrible sins. Here's what the verse says. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. Who's that sound like in our culture? Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. Another problem with the abortion industry is it's exactly what I said. It's an industry making a lot of money. When you see the abortion DVDs, you're going to see how much money was being made. And then you're going to have to think, oh, that DVD is from the 1980s. And actually, the 1980s is one of the worst decades in our country for abortion, where we had the highest rates. Up, upwards getting close to 1.6 million, which is 600,000 more than we see a year than we're seeing right now. So Proverbs 27, 25. Then, of course, children have a special place in the heart of God, and particularly in the heart of Jesus. We know that. We have Luke 18, 15 and 16. And they brought unto him, talking about Jesus, also infants, that he would touch them. And of course, the disciples, what do they do? They complain and rebuke Jesus about it. Okay. Also, uh, Matthew 19, 14. Another one is Matthew 18, 3 through 10. Verse 6 is an example of where Jesus says it's better for a millstone to be hung about the neck of someone who offends a child. Well, what about killing a child before they're born? Okay, so Luke 18, 15, and 16, Matthew 19, 14, also Matthew 18, 6. Yes? Um, I looked up Jeremiah 1, 15. That's verse 
five. That's verse five? Okay, thank you. Didn't catch that. Verse five, Jeremiah one five. All right, two more Bible principles. Here's another one. Remember we said that abortion eliminates God's providence in the lives of people. God's providence. So who is the giver of life? And in the Old Testament in particular, as we're going through the history of patriarchs, what do we notice? That the birth of a child is in God's hand and often very directly in God's hands. We have Genesis 25. This is the example of Rebecca. Okay, Rebecca, Isaac's wife. Do you think it was God's providence that she had those twins and in the order that she had them, et cetera, et cetera? Um, another example is probably a little more familiar to you would be Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Okay, the Bible says that God shut up Hannah's womb. Okay, so the birth of children is in God's hands. And this is going to be one of our kind of themes is that God is the giver of life and God is also the taker of life. And when we cross that line of taking human life, we violated God's uh, authority. Um, a final principle is that children are both a blessing and a responsibility. I think you're familiar with Psalms 127 verse 3. Psalms 127, verse 3, that's the verse, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. And then, responsibility. Proverbs 22, 6, I know you know that one. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So yes, children are both a blessing and a responsibility. And many of the reasons given by women of why they had an abortion was they weren't ready or they couldn't afford it or it interferes with their plans is the problem. So in our country, what are we doing? Everything is kind of upside down. What are we doing? What are we protecting? Everything but human life. 